Hi, welcome to another video. So, OpenAI has launched their O3 and O4 mini models. That's why I thought I'd talk about them. Basically, there are two models. There's the O3 model and the O4 mini model. Anyway, the O3 model is the same model that they talked about in December. It wasn't made available back then, but it's now available and is claimed to be even better than before. Anyway, both the O3 and O4 mini models have also been specifically trained for tool calling as well. In ChatGPT, they can use multiple tools too, like image generation, Python interpretation, and other stuff, which is great. But if we talk about the models themselves, then both of them are multimodal and can also do reasoning, obviously. In the Ader Polyglot benchmark, the O3 model scores about 81.3%, which is about 10% higher than Gemini 2.5 Pro. O4 mini scores 58.2%, which is lower than Gemini 2.5 Pro by 15%, which is pretty bad. This is for the O4 mini high version, and it also can't beat Claude 3.7 Sonnet either which is interesting to see, because the high variant will probably cost almost the same as Gemini 2.5 Pro. In fact, it will charge you the same cost for worse performance, and O3 is super pricey, which I'll expand on further in a bit. They haven't compared it to them here, but I'm telling you based on the data available on Ader's Polyglot leaderboard. One thing that I found great is that it can do thinking with images. They say that these models can integrate images directly into their chain of thought. They don't just see an image, they think with it. It can zoom into images and stuff like that, which is kind of amazing nonetheless. Now, let's talk about the pricing as well. But before we do that, let me tell you about Ninja Chat. Ninja Chat is an all-in-one AI platform where, for just $11 per month, you get access to top AI models like GPT-40, Claude 3.7 Sonnet, and Gemini 2.0 Flash, all in one place. I've been using Gemini for quick research, but what's really cool is their AI playground where you can compare responses from different models side by side. Their mind map generator is a game changer for organizing complex ideas as well. The basic plan gives you 1,000 messages, 30 images, and 5 videos monthly, with higher tiers available if you need more. Use my code KING25 for 25% off any plan or KING40 yearly for 40% off annual subscriptions. Check the link in description to try it yourself. Now, back to the video. So, the O4 mini model costs about $1.10 or $0.275 with catching for input and $4.40 for output, which is good pricing. Like, it's pretty good, which is great to see from OpenAI. O3 is super expensive and costs about $10 or $2.50 if catched for input and $40 for output, which is quite high. And for the performance, it doesn't seem as worth it. But we'll see about that. O4 Mini is not the soda from Ader's benchmark, which I believe in. So, I think Gemini will still remain the best one, but we will talk about it in the next videos. O4 Mini will also be faster, and O3 might be slower at times. You can also set the reasoning efforts accordingly in the API, and in ChatGPT as well, if you wish to use that. Most of the stuff shown is in high settings, and the high settings will cost you a ton at times, which can be bad for sure. Another thing that they have launched is their new Codex CLI tool. This is similar to Claude Code or Ader, and it is a terminal interface that allows you to do coding with it and make changes to files and stuff like that. It is open source, which is quite amazing, and it mainly uses the new models. You can use any OpenAI model with it accordingly. It is mainly only compatible with Mac and Linux, so there's that. It comes built in with Apple Seatbelt for easy and secure usage on codecs. 
One thing that I liked about it is that it is open source, which is really great, as Claude Code was not open source, which was not as great for sure. They say that Codex CLI is built for developers who already live in the terminal and want chat GPT level reasoning plus the power to actually run code, manipulate files, and iterate, all under version control. In short, it's chat-driven development that understands and executes your repo. It uses the same OpenAI API, and probably someone will be able to edit it and make it compatible with any OpenAI-compatible API, which will allow us to use it with Gemini, which will be quite cool and I'll talk about it in the next videos. I like this because who doesn't want 20 more terminal tools to do vibe coding, as the kids say these days? So, it should be kind of cool for sure, and it's a good job by OpenAI for sure. You can also set up the rules and stuff with it as well. I'll see how well it performs, because I haven't tested it myself yet. It has both a chat interface as well as the option to use it in line with a task, which is also fine and mostly very similar to Ader and Claude Code. Like, the interface is super close to Ader for sure. It is built with TypeScript and not Rust, and still, it claims to be lightweight, which is pretty interesting for them to say. But, I digress. It also has auto mode and stuff like that, which is great and I'll do a dedicated video about it accordingly. You can install it easily via NPM and then use it accordingly. It is named based on their first coding model called OpenAI Codex, and that was quite cool at the time. So, I like the tribute to it. I think that these models are great, but O4 Mini High will probably end up costing you about the same as Gemini 2.5 Pro and will only give you worse results. These are just speculations from my side based on the benchmarks, and we'll see how well it performs, or if it doesn't. The O3 model is quite good, but it will cost a ton and is not super economical for everyday usage. So, there's that. It should become compatible with most of the stuff as well, and you should be able to use it accordingly. If you are looking for free ways to use it, then it should become available in GitHub models for a free API, at least for O4 Mini, and it should also be available in Requesty in a bit, which is what I use. It is also available on Windsurf for free even to free users for some time, so you can use that as well. I find them to be good on paper and nothing extraordinary, but I haven't tried it out yet as much and I'll update you guys on my thoughts in the next videos accordingly. So, stay tuned for that. You can test it out in the meantime and comment below. I'd like to see what you guys think about the models and what they are performing great at and where they are failing, and I'll try to cover those aspects as well. It's not anything extraordinary, at least it seems on paper, but we'll see. Overall, it's pretty cool. Anyway, share your thoughts below and subscribe to the channel. You can also donate via Super Thanks option or join the channel as well and get some perks. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.